you know, I think what the brain does, what the brain does is obviously it's a survival gadget, yeah. right? Our brain evolved because our ancestors in the African savannah and elsewhere in planet Earth, they were under pressure to 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 find the next meal to to get lodging that would protect them from the harsh environment and you look at us we're not the strongest mm -hmm. out there in the world we're not the fastest right, right? But what do we have we have cognitive abilities right. that are among the most sophisticated on planet earth i'm not going to say i don't like you know this kind of human singularism human exceptionalism per se there are other intelligent creatures on the planet but we're in the we're in the upper echelon let's say we lack sonar and a few things so that's right you know. that's right exactly and and so what we did is in order to survive we gained an ever more refined capacity through evolution by natural selection to find creative solutions to the challenges that we faced Rather than, you know, being able to jump over that fast moving stream, we found a way of navigating through that fast moving stream that most other life forms wouldn't have found. And so we then passed on this creative ability to abstract and come up with creative solutions. We pass it on to the next generation and they refined it and on and on it went across the generations. And then when it comes to science, basically what is science? Science is taking that capacity and pushing it well beyond the needs of survival, right? We don't need to understand electrons, right? We don't need to understand electrons or quantum physics or black holes to get the next meal or, or to have, you know, shelter. But what our brains do is they overshoot. We go beyond the needs of mere survival. And so that creative instinct that served us well in the ancestral world now gives us the capacity to understand esoteric qualities of the world like quantum physics and entanglement and black holes and general relativity and so forth so somewhere in that evolutionary mix is the mm. answer to your question but if you ask me when i look at some of the deep insights of physics and look you know one of my specializations is in relativity so einstein of course is the grand hero so i'll just use him as an example but there are many when i look at some of the ideas that einstein introduced into physics like curve space-time yeah. i've tried to follow his reasoning because i wanted to answer your question <laughs> where did this idea come from yeah so I trace it back and you can post facto make an explanation aha he was thinking about this then this then this and it, but i think we're just making up a story i think at some level the human brain rearranges ingredients it finds new patterns it finds new combinations and Einstein had the ability to find a radically new combination that nobody had thought about before that ultimately led to his greatest contribution, the general theory of relativity. So somewhere in that mix of a brain that can creatively find solutions and just the wonderful architecture of the mind that allows it to rearrange pieces, new ideas emerge. There's the thought that there's no unique ideas, no new ideas. Is that do you believe that to be true? Well, it depends, of course, how you define define the word new. Um, I think the vast majority of ideas are rearrangements of existing pieces. You know, finding new patterns within stuff that's already out there. And to my mind, if that teaches you something, if it gives you insight, if it allows you to leverage it to build something, that you couldn't have done before, then I'm happy to call it a new idea. So I guess I'm maybe a little less strict with my definition of new. But from, from that perspective, I'd say the ingredients are there, but it's all about how you arrange them and the patterns that you find. Then what are we? If we're pattern-making machines, if we're meaning-making machines, <laughs> right? What, what exactly are we? I have a couple of answers to that, and they all interleave at some level and i think in addressing a, an important question like that you have to choose the level of analysis that you're asking the question so if you ask me what are we at the fundamental physical level i'd say we are nothing but large collections of particles atoms electrons protons neutrons that have configured themselves into a very specific coherent pattern that allows us to navigate the world in the manner that we do. So answer number one, we're bags of particles governed by physical law. 
That's mostly energy, right? So empty space too. It's mostly empty space and the particles carry energy. And there certainly is energy in the form of radiation that we are immersed within. So yes, there's a wonderful interplay between the stuff that we're made of and the ambient environment. Okay. I wouldn't want to stop my explanation of who we are there because it's very okay. mechanistic. And so I would start to build up. And if we had enough time, I'd go through a bit of chemistry, a bit of biology. But let me go right to the level of human mind, because that's right. really, I think, where we feel who we are. And at that level, the language that you used, I would concur with. We are meaning making machines. We are pattern recognition devices. We find it very useful to look out into the world and organize things as that helps us to survive and to gain greater insight into the kinds of behaviors that will be beneficial to us. And so we are bags of particles that have the special ability to find patterns, to invent meaning, and in that way to experience the world at the level that you and I are right now at the conscious level. That to me is still a deep mystery where does consciousness come from? But I would say in between these two scales, bags of particles and meaning making pattern recognition machines, that sort of spans the gamut of what we mean by a human being. Do you agree with Elon Musk that there's a very high probability that we are a simulation? It seems like as pattern recognizers, like, and then we, we make these patterns essentially in our world that we're a pattern making a pattern. Wouldn't a pattern make a pattern? Yes, and, and there are many self-referential versions of that statement. You know, we are collections of atoms that can contemplate atoms. We are massive amounts of molecules that can make meaning, right? I mean, so there is this wonderful juxtaposition between our physical makeup the fact that everything else in the world has its physical makeup. And we recognize that because we are patterns of particles with the capacity to find patterns in other particles. So right. I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful story about how there's an objective world out there and we can build a model of that objective world in our subjective minds. And that allows us to navigate and, and survive in a way that would be difficult otherwise. As to the question, though, that you started with, with are we in a simulation, I would have to say from a gut feeling, I think I would, like most people, recoil at that idea, say the yeah. answer manifestly is not true. There are powerful arguments, and I don't know the one that Elon Musk perhaps is making reference to, but certainly you can imagine that if in the future, I don't believe that we have this capacity, at least here at the moment, but if... We are able to build artificial systems, computers say, that do have sentience, that do have an inner world of conscious experience, then yes, I think in the future, it may be possible to simulate worlds in which there are beings inside the simulation yeah. that feel things. Right. I don't, I don't see an obstacle to that in any fundamental huh. way. I don't wow. think... I don't think that this gloppy gray biological thing inside of our heads is essential to have the kinds of experiences that we do. I think if there's a computational version of this that does it correctly, and that's a big question, how would you, mm -hmm. how would you do that? I don't see any obstacle for there to be a feeling, sensing being inside of a, a computer. I, I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't see a fundamental obstacle. If that's the case, you do run into an interesting idea, which is in the very far future, whatever that means, it may be very easy to sit down in the evening, flip on a few switches, push a few buttons and create a whole universe inside of a computer. And if everybody is doing this, it's the new fad. You can imagine that there are a gazillion of these simulated worlds running in parallel on all these sure. computers. And then you say, well, what's the likelihood that this universe is not one of those, that this one is somehow special? It's a real yeah. universe. Well, yeah. I think there's only one real universe. If there are a gazillion simulated ones, 
the odds are we're in a simulation. And that's sort of the way that that reasoning goes. Um, the big if, can you create consciousness in a computer? Nobody really knows the answer to that. And the other big if, and this is emphasized by a philosopher named Nick Bostrom at Oxford, just to give credit where credit is due, he said, look, maybe it's the case that any sufficiently advanced civilization that gains the capacity to understand things well enough to make sentience inside of a computer, at the same time, they're also building sophisticated weapons because apparently that that's what smart beings do, at least from this one piece of data. <laughs> And they blow themselves up before they get to the point of creating these simulated worlds. Maybe nobody survives long enough because we're such an aggressive yeah. life form. Um, so that's the other way that you can obviate this conclusion that we're in a simulation. Or you can simply hmm. say, hey, I don't believe that you'll ever have consciousness in a computer. Done. End of story. I can see the pathway. I mean, if there was something, if consciousness, if I was controlling, if I was using a controller and playing a video game, then I am consciousness is still making that player do something it is but it's still channeled through you you know what we what we think is a flesh and blood look we've never met and right now you're just a bunch of pixels on my screen but i'm <laughs> assuming that you're not some sort of fancy video chat bot that there's a real human being there uh and given that you are still the initiator and the origin of the consciousness that's driving right. your avatar mm -hmm. in, that, in that video game imagine though you don't need that that the avatar in the video game is so sophisticated that mm. it creates its own consciousness and maybe it can even replicate within that world and have children that are conscious. If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.